Okay, so um, chapter 11 is all about circles. And so when we talk about circles, um, one of the things that we discuss um, in circles are what are called a tangent line. And a, we've discussed this some this year, but just as a quick definition, a tangent line is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. And so when you think about that, another way that people often describe it is to say that it is a line that butts right up next to a circle, but doesn't actually ever enter the inside of the circle, but it does intersect the circle and it's always at a single point. So there are some important theorems about it. The, the first theorem from your book um, is theorem 11.1. .1, and what it says is that um, uh, if a line is tangent to a circle, so like the picture I just drew, right? This is a line that's tangent to this circle. Uh, we'll call this circle O. Well, then um, you have um, this idea that um, then it is perpendicular to a radius through the point of tangency. Now, point of tangency is that single point. Right, the exactly one point is called the point of tangency. And so um, then it is perpendicular to a radius through the point of tangency. So when we say point of tangency, that's what we're referring to. So what that means is from this radius to that tangent line, you have a right angle. And that right angle is going to be very, very, very important to us. And so that is a theorem that we're going to use over and over and over again in this um, idea of circles is that, oh, look, there's a tangent line. If I connect it to the center of the circle, the point of tangency, then I have a right angle. Um, so some examples of how that works. Um, maybe you'd have a problem like this. Where you have a circle. Um, and you know that this angle is, um, uh, you know that that is a, not a right angle. You know that uh, point A is a tangent and you got circle B, uh, we'll call this C. And so you're given that AC is um, tangent to circle B. Uh, whenever we say circle B, um, we mean that the, the a circle with center B, okay? So B is the center of the circle. Um, and so you might say, then find X if um, angle ABC equals 46 degrees. Well, if we get this be 46 degrees, X is easy to find because we know this is a right angle. And so that means X must just be 44 degrees because 180 minus 90 minus 46 to give us 44 degrees. The other thing that you might notice is that you got right triangle. And so obviously we can do all of our right triangle things like special right triangles and Pythagorean theorem. Um, there is a uh, one type of uh, really classic example problem of these. It's called the gear ratio problems. Um, and you'll have a few of these in your book. Uh, the basic idea of a gear ratio problem is you've got two different gears and then you have your chain that's going around them like this. And so this is what it looks like. And uh, in, in your book, I'll just go ahead and use the, the same letters, uh, just in a, it's actually in a little bit different order, um, where you're given that you have... Um, your points of tangency, you have your centers that look like this. 
And so you've got circle M and circle N. Um, you got your points of tangency at S, R, P, and Q. These, these lines are tangent. The reason it's a gear ratio problem is if you look at this, you can kind of see the bicycle gear that's happening. And a lot of times what you're trying to find um, is either the distance from M to N, which means connects the centers of the gears, or maybe the distances from S to R, or maybe the radiuses of the different circles. Um, and the key to it is recognizing that these are going to be right angles. Okay, and the reason why that's significant is these angles here, S, N, N, and R, M, N, or you can think about it as angle one and two, they are not right angles. The way you solve these problems is by looking at, and so in this case, the one we'll do, we'll say that S, N equals three, um, RM equals five and SR equals eight. Um, actually, let's say 12. And what you want to find is MN. And so you're given that SN is three, RM is five, and SR is 12. And so how do you solve this um, value for MN? Well, what you do is you draw in a rectangle. If I draw in this rectangle right here, the reason why that's significant is because now I know that this length is 12, right? To this point right here. And then because this length is three and this length is five, we're gonna get that this length is two. So we get a side length of 12, a side length is two. And so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what that length is. And so it's going to be x squared just equals 12 squared plus 2 squared, which gives you the square root of 148, which is um, just a little bit bigger than 12. And that is 12.2. And so our value of mn, round to the nearest tenth, is just going to be 12.2. And you're going to use some version of that to solve the, the gear ratio problems. Okay, the other two theorems um, that we have in this section, um, theorem 11.2 is going to be just the converse of 11.1, and that is um, if a line um, intersects a circle, and is um, perpendicular to the radius through that point, then the line is tangent. And so basically what that says is, if we're not sure that the lines are tangent to each other, Right, but we do know that we have a right angle between the radius and that line, then we know that this is a point of tangency and that it doesn't intersect it at more than one point. And then the more important one, the one that we'll, we'll spend, uh, also will get used a lot, um, is theorem 11.13, 11.3. Um, and that is um, two segment, the two, seg the two segments, tangent to a circle from a point outside the circle and so what that means is so just to give you an idea of what this theorem is developing you've got a point outside a circle and then you draw in the two tangent segments Right, there's two ways that you can go and be tangent to that circle from outside the circle. Um, are congruent. And so this length is equal to that length. And so if this was A, B, and C, AB is tangent to the circle, AC is tangent to the circle, B and C are the points of tangency. So that means that AB is congruent 
to AC. So um, just a couple of quick examples about how this is used. Um, when you, uh, one way that it's used is recognizing that um, when I draw these in, if I get angle C equals um, 42 degrees, find angle D. Well, the reason why that's going to be easy to do is because you're going to end up with a kite because AC is congruent to uh, BC. That is the, um, uh, you need to be given that AC and BC are tangents, but you're given that AC is congruent to BC by the theorem we just did. We know that AD is congruent to BD because those are both radius and radius are always congruent to each other. So this is a kite. And then we also know from the theorem 11.1 .1 that this angle and this angle are right angles. So if this is 42 degrees, then we can find that angle by simply subtracting 180 minus 42 because you get 360 for the sum of our kite, the angles in our kite, minus 90 minus 90, that's where the 180 comes from, and then subtract 42 to that, and you end up with 138 degrees. So you got 138 degrees, and so that is the value there. The other thing we do is we end up with problems like this. You've got a circle, and then you, you have this. You got these points of tangencies. So you got triangle ABC. You have a, a triangle that, that is inscribed inside, the circle is in, inscribed inside the triangle or the triangle circumscribed outside the circle. Um, and if I know that this length is five and this length is six and this length is four, I might want to, it might ask you what is the perimeter of the polygon, of the uh, triangle? Well, if this length from here to here is five, then this length is also five. If this is four, then this length is also four. If this is six, then this is also six. And so it turns out that the triangle just has side lengths um, 11, 10, and nine. So 11 plus 10 plus nine equals 30. And so the perimeter is 30. All right, the, the last idea is um, just circumscribed versus inscribed. Um, and so uh, just understand the language. So from this, this for this example, you could either say the um, circle, and this is all relevant to which one you're talking about, right? Circle is inscribed in the triangle. And notice when that happens, that means that it meets each of the sides at tangent, or is tangent to each of the sides. The other way you could say that is the triangle is circumscribed about the circle. And so you can use circumscribed or inscribed to describe this picture. It just decides which one you talk about. Remember, we did talk about um, in the, the last section we were doing regular polygons, and that is a polygon inside a circle. It's the same idea. It just doesn't involve tangents, and so we're not going to we're not going to talk about those um, necessarily. But um, that would be the picture that looks like this, right? For this one, it would be the triangle. The triangle inscribed in the circle or the circle inscribed is circumscribed about the triangle. So make sure you understand the um, way that that terminology gets used.